Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to find the exact moment of inertia of a long bar of, L, of length L and mass M by using segmentation, the numerical method, but now we're going to increase the number of segments till we have an infinite number of segments and we should get the exact result. How do we do that? Well, again, we're going to add up all the sections, I1, we're going to find the moment of inertia of each section, there's going to be n number of sections, and in the end we're going to go to the limit when n goes to infinity. So what does that look like? Well, if we have n segments, then each segment will have a mass of the total mass divided by n. So that means we're going to have uh, m divided by n, the mass for each segment, and then we have to multiply that times, well, let's see here, that would be the mass times the distance squared. So it'll be the length L divided by the number of segments N, and we have to square that. So we have, in this case, that would be 1L over N quantity squared plus M over N times 2L over N quantity squared plus m over n. So each segment will have a mass of the total mass divided by the number of segments, and then we have to increase the distance of each segment. That will be 3l over n. That would be 3n over l quantity squared and so forth, all the way until we end up with m over n times nl over n quantity squared. Now you can see why we want the center mass to be at the end of each segment so we can have this format right here. Now how do we generalize that format? Again, we can factor out an m over n, we can factor 1 over n squared and an l squared. So if we do that, we have i is approximately equal to m over n cubed times l squared. Now we have in the brackets, we'll have 1 squared plus 2 squared now, it turns out that the quantity inside the brackets, we can actually find a means of writing that so that we can manipulate the result. And so that means we can say that i is approximately equal to ml squared over n cubed times the quantity, that would be n, times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. So that's what's inside the parentheses like that can be written like this. Now if we're going to rearrange the terms, we could then say that i is approximately equal to ml squared over 6 times, so we're going to bring the n cube in the brackets here, we're going to write this as n over n times n plus 1 over n times 2n plus 1 over n. Now there's a reason why we write it like that. You'll see in just a moment. So now what we can do is we can divide the n into the numerator for each of those fractions. So let's continue over here and see what we get. So now we have the moment of inertia. Let me drop down just a little bit. Moment of inertia is approximately equal to ml squared over 6 times so we have n divided by n, which is 1, times n goes into n plus 1. We can write this as 1 plus 1 over n times, and n goes into 2n plus 1, 2 plus 1 over n. So now we can write it like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to let n go to infinity. So now we find the limit as n goes to infinity and then i, i will now be equal to, so now if we let n go into infinity, this should now be equal to the exact value of one third ml squared. Let's see if that is the case. So I have ml squared over six times, when n goes to infinity, one over n goes to zero, so this would be one times one plus zero, times, and again here, 1 over n goes to 0, so it would be 2 plus 0. And of course, 1 plus 0 is 1, 2 plus 0 is 2, so 1 times 1 times 2 is 2, so i is equal to ml squared divided by 6 times 2, and of course 2 divided by 6 is 1 third, so i is indeed the expected value of 1 third 
ML squared. So here, not needing calculus, but using numerical methods, we're able to find the exact value of the moment of inertia of a long bar of length L with mass M by using this numerical methods technique. And actually, when you think of it, it's quite a nice method. That is how it's done.